Yes! The question mainly everyone's probably been asking. What you don't have the answer to. What is so hard to figure out that you just go... What do I spend my promises on? What is up? Welcome back to another Whisker Chan Banger video. It's your boy Whisker Chan in the building. And in today's video, as you have heard at the beginning, yes, it's a very complex discussion. Because as you do know, in 1.4, most likely we will be getting a Venti rerun. Take that with a hint of salt. But just letting you know, in 1.4, we most likely will get a Venti rerun banner for the Mondstadt Festival. And if we do, what's right before that, guys? Hmm, let me think. Let me. Oh, Hu Tao. Yes! Hu Tao! That was pretty loud. What the heck? I'm so sorry if I scared you guys. Hu Tao is the banner right before Venti. And I am here to help you decide whether you should get Hu Tao or whether you should get Venti. Who is the more optimal pick and why are they the more optimal pick? Or let me just help you boost your aesthetic. Whose aesthetic do you like better? It's really up to you what you get because like like I said, this game is based off of preference. Every unit is actually good in their own way. And also, it's really mainly, like I said, about aesthetic elements and all of that, of that nature, whether you want a character or not. And I'm going to help you decide if you want that character or if you want that character. So I got you. Y'all already know it's a versus video. Who to get, who to summon on, who to save for. But anyway, let's go ahead and get right into this. But before we do, if you are new to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Two of the subscribers on the grind to 2,500. We are almost there, guys. We are literally less than 20 subscribers away. So let's go ahead and hit that button and join the subscribers. Just hit that button, guys. And also, hit the notification bell to be notified of all my daily uploads, because I do upload really daily, very consistent, and sometimes two uploads a day, or just maybe just one. But anyway, just make sure you hit that notification bell to get all my uploads. And also, smash the like button down below. You're going to enjoy this content. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this video. The first thing I want to discuss is Hu Tao. There's been a lot everybody has been seeing about Hu Tao. You know, like, you know, everybody's been analyzing the character from since we basically got her leak and whatnot. But... Let's go ahead and go over her, summarize her, and you know, after that, go over Venti, summarize him, and then eventually go over what you should get and why you should get them. There is no better unit, by the way, in this video, so do not even think about that. What's better is if the unit's better to you because you like it more, it's not up to me what's better to you, okay? I'm just gonna help you come to a conclusion. So anyway, let's go ahead and go over Huta. Y'all already know she is a five-star pole arm pyro user, which is very unique since we don't have a lot of pole arms in the game. So lots of starters right there. Definitely getting this pole arm will make everything way better. And Zomi getting his buff in 1.3 will make everything way better since he is a pole arm as well. So pole arms, rise up. But anyway, here we go right here. Uh, as you see, her stat progression has not changed. She is still going to be based off of crit damage, similar to Ganyu. She's going to be based off crit damage, and she's also going to have like 38.4% extra, which is really, really good. And then she has tons of HP. We will discuss why she has HP real soon. And then the literally low attack. Like I said, guys, don't worry about the attack. Because I will say this for the last time, the crit damage and the base HP make up for the low attack. And also, you know, weapons, certain weapons and certain builds on your character can make up for that low attack. As you know that in her uh, elemental her elemental skill, I believe, yeah. Basically, you cannot exceed 300% of Hu Tao's base attack once you do her Parmita Papilio, which is her elemental uh, skill, which she transforms. And if you don't know what happens, basically she converts all her damage to pyro damage, and it cannot be overridden by any other elemental infusion, right? Charge attacks apply the Blood Blossom effect, which ticks every 4 seconds doing pyro damage. So, and also another thing to note about the Blood Blossom is it lasts for 8 seconds, meaning it's going to tick 2 times. So if you're level 10, it'll tick 2 times for 115.2% going to a 230.4% max damage. And the good thing about this is if you have a Hydro, like if you, some people have said before that they wanted to pair Child with Hu Tao. And I was thinking like, those are two sort of main DPSs. I was like, well, how's that going to work? And then they described it with the Blood Blossom effect. And I'm like, wow, actually the Blood Blossom may be really good because of it ticking for that pyro damage, consistently keeping the enemy in pyro, uh, with pyro damage on them for 8 seconds, basically. And then you're going to be able to be with our, your boy Child and just do tons of vaporized damage, which can be very optimal if you are a Child main. Or it could be, you know, like, I feel like maybe Riptide wouldn't be as effective since it doesn't consistently, you know, you have to proc it and then do it again for it to do the AoE Hydro damage and then proc it again. It's like you have to continuously do that. But with the Blood Blossom, it stays on the enemy for 8 seconds, which is kind of crazy. So anyway, the damage is really, really good. It can go higher one uh, on level 15, 152%. Which is really good, but what we're really looking at in this form is the attack increase. Like I said, her health really does make up for the low attack. So does the crit damage because you could build a crit damage build with this character. And the reason I say that, especially if you have C6, if that's unrealistic, but if you have C6 with this character, right? 
you'd literally be able to just build a full crit, crit damage build because of what you'll be able to do with C6, which I'll go over really soon. So anyway, we have the attack increase, which is really, really beneficial because it goes off of max HP. And like I said, it does not exceed 300%. So the more base attack you have, the better, meaning you need literally tons of attack from the base attack on level 90. You need tons of attack for a level, a maxed out weapon, gold weapon, if you possibly can, maxed out attack. And if you can get substat attack, so you got tons of base attack, right? And then, you know, attack percent um, on your artifacts, on your sands, right? So anyway, like I said, this is based on max HP. You want to get as much base attack as you can, though, so that this 300% can go pretty high. Because it cannot exceed 300% of Hutao's base attack. So if her base attack is low, it's not going to exceed 300% of whatever you have. So you really do need to get a lot of base attack, is what I'm saying. But you also need to get a lot of HP, so don't forget that, right? Now, the good thing about this is she has a really good starter base HP. And then also you can build up her HP and then the weapon on her weapon banner, if you get it, does give her extra HP. So anyway, like I said, the duration of this form is 9 seconds, cooldown 16 seconds, which means after you're done with this form, I'm pretty sure you're going to have to wait 16 seconds to proc it again. Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't cool down while you're in the form. If it does, that would be pretty cool, but we don't know that yet. Once the character releases, once we get her trailer and whatnot, we'll know more about her, right? So anyway, we'll go over her elemental burst, which is where everything does come in because of the uniqueness of her elemental burst. The first burst in the game to be able to do regular skill damage as well as low HP skill damage, which means the lower your HP, the more damage you're going to do. The, you're, the more damage you're going to do. And the regular HP you have, you're just going to do regular damage. As you can see, the multipliers are right here. At level 10, I will always go over level 10, guys. Uh, level 10 skills damage 493, but if you have low HP, it's 617. And what it means by low HP is not just any low HP. Not just like you lose 1,000 HP. You need to have equal to 50, 50%, 50 or you need to have less than 50% HP in order to do this damage, right? So if you have less than 50% HP, it's really, really good that you could do this low HP skill damage. And also keep in mind, there's low HP skill regeneration and low HP skill uh, regeneration. So, I mean, regular skill HP and then low HP is what I meant. So basically, the lower your HP, the more you heal. The higher your HP, the regular you heal, right? So one thing to note about this, the good thing about this, when you drop below 50%, not only are you proccing for the low HP skill damage, you're also proccing for a passive, which does this right here. When Hutao's HP is equal to or less than 50%, her power damage bonus is increased by 33%. Now, originally, I'm pretty sure it was 25%. So they, they actually buffed her. They buffed Hutao and gave her 33% now. And that is ex that's extremely beneficial, especially if you have power damage on her cup or her uh, goblet. You have power damage, which you want to opt for, a gold artifact with uh, power damage, crit damage at the bottom, substats. So definitely having this right here added to the, the original, you know, power damage you're going to have is going to be absolutely insane. 33% is a lot. And then when you drop below 50% health or at 50, boom, you have 33% increased power damage. And then you're going to do late, low HP skill damage, which is going to do tons of damage. And then you're going to have your attack increase if you have your Parmita Papilio on. So you're going to do literally massive damage with this character. Even though she's going to be a low HP warrior, realize that she's literally going to be absolutely insane for how she works. And if you pair her with like a really good team comp, really, really good team comp, double pyro, double geo, or something like that, whatever you want to do, uh, it will be insane. I have a team comps video for her. I think I do. And if I do, I will add it to the end of the video. But if I don't, I'll make a team comp video for Hu Tao. So anyway, like I was saying though, we have constellations, right? This... Like I said, if you have six, it's insane. You really could run just 100% crit damage because she increases her crit rate by 100%. You're probably saying, why? When Hu Tao's HP drops below 25%, and when she suffers a lethal strike, Hu Tao will not fall. She will not die at all. No matter how low HP, she will not die. And the damage sustained, uh, additionally, for the next 10 seconds, all of her elemental and physical res is increased by 200%, meaning she's taking no damage. Crit rate increased by 100%, and her resistance to interruption is greatly increased. This effect triggers automatically when Hu Tao has 1 HP left. This can only occur every 1 minute. But this lasts for 10 seconds, meaning you only have to wait, what, 50 seconds for this to cool down. And then, you know, by the time 50 seconds is up, you should have your next elemental burst. And, or you'll be, like, really low HP from using uh, a whole bunch of Parmita Papilios, which is our elemental skill. So, if you use this a lot, you lose a lot of HP because it takes 30% of your current HP. And then, boom, you find yourself at a deadfall or you get smacked by a Law Churl and then it drops your health all the way down there. You don't die. You will not die at all. You will do, you will literally have increased crit rate and you'll take no damage, basically. Even though you're not going to die anyway, you'll take no damage. So that's really, really cool. I feel like Constellation is really insane. I just wanted to say that because she still is insane with Constellation. But without Constellation, she is one of the craziest units you'll ever see. So Hu Tao is definitely to be taken into consideration, not to be taken lightly. These are Ascension Materials. You can pause the video if you want to see these. Uh, also, there's another thing down here. Let me find them. 
These are her talent essential materials as well, right here, as you can see, if you want to grind these out. And don't forget, you have to grind a lot of more for a character. You need like 2 million more to max a character out, I think, or more than 2 million. So anyway, that's really about it for Utah. Let's go ahead and go over Venti, and then after that, compare them and see which one you should get and why you should get them in the first place. Now, Venti, guys, there he is a special case because of the fact of what he can do. I wouldn't call him a DPS like uh, Hutao. I would call him a ultra super support energy battery DPS character. The reason I say this, or DPS support character. The reason I say this is because he's based off of energy recharge. You're probably saying, okay, why is that good if you don't know anything about Venti, if you didn't summon on him, because he was the first banner, so everybody kind of slept on him. He goes, his energy recharge goes up to 32%, level 80 plus level 90, right? Now, the good thing about him is his elemental skill, not only is it a really good support for plunge damage and for flying, and for hitting enemies with animal damage, you know, because it has a press damage and a hold damage. And the hold damage does a considerable amount of damage. Basically, it makes a big circle around you, you fly up, and the, there's a passive where he has his current that he makes from his hold on his hold elemental skill. Basically, it the up current lasts for 20 seconds, so you can fly for 20 seconds basically, and then like do plunge damage if you want. And it does a really considerable amount of damage. The cooldown on the hold is 15 seconds, but if you just press it, it's six seconds, and basically, once you press it, it'll just lift them up it'll just you'll throw a little circle out and it'll lift them up unlike this one where you make a big circle around you and you fly and lift everybody up and do tons of animal damage so anyway the reason this is so good is because how much energy you get back with the sky Sonic. i have been over this in a video uh about the rerun for venti that might be coming 1.4 i will link that at the end of the video so that you can see exactly because i have gameplay in there showing what venti could do how much energy venti gets back and whatnot and like it's not even with a energy battery comp really so like i said he gets tons of energy back just from this right here, his elemental skill. And then he also has tons of energy recharge. So it's like really, really good, I feel like, definitely. And this is where everything comes in, though. His wins, grand OD. This is elemental burst. Now, there's multiple reasons why this is extremely good. And we're going to go over them right now. So first off is elemental absorption in this. Meaning, if the Storm Eye comes into contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, it will do additional dam elemental damage of that type. The elemental absorption may only occur once per use. Now you're probably saying, oh, that's actually really good, combining elements. But it doesn't stop there. Let me go over one more thing before we finish Wind's Grand OD. You probably guessed it. It is the 4-piece VV set. 4-piece VV set on any animal support is really good. The reason why is because not only does it give them on 2-piece 15% animal damage bonus, on the 4-piece it increases your swell damage by 60%, doing additional damage with your, you know, support or your, your elemental absorption unit is really good. But that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is it decreases the opponent's elemental res to the element infused in the swirl by 40% for 10 seconds. So, what does that mean? Once you put a, once you do his wins grand OD, guys, right? Let me go back. Once you do his wins grand OD, right? And then you can, in, like it says, you can do elemental absorption. You can put Hydro, Cryo, or Pyro, or Electro in there. Say, for example, you put Pyro in there. You know, you have Jin, Zhao Ling, or you have, you know, Diluc, and you put some fire in there. Boom. It's going to make the whole Vortex set on fire, and then you're still going to be doing Swirl damage and Pyro damage at the same time. And not only is it going to do that, if you have the four-piece VV set on this animal character, you will also decrease their res to the element that was infused, which in that case was Pyro, by 40%, meaning all Pyro attacks will deal literally tons of damage because of their res being decreased by 40 percent so that is extremely beneficial that literally that set is run on sucrose it could be run on travel if you don't have any really good animal supports it could be run on venti of course it's literally insane so i feel like definitely four piece vv set on your support on venti would be insane you literally will do tons of damage because of decreasing the elemental res. You will literally do crowd control because how his elemental burst works, which I will link at the end of the video with the gameplay. Literally, you shoot his elemental burst. It sucks everybody into one place, which makes it easier to do tons of DPS, tons of damage. And then their elemental res is decreased. It's going to do even more damage depending on what element you put in there, depending on what element you use as your main DPS. And as you can see, the additional elemental damage is extremely, goes extremely high, which is really, really good. The duration is 8 seconds and the cooldown is 15. Energy cost is 6. He literally gets his energy back like this guys and the, uh, the damage over time is insane too Because not that it really matters because of what it's used for it's not used for damage It's used for helping your team do the damage helping your team decrease the res helping your team do that additional elemental damage This is a team player this venti is a team player character and that's what I want everybody to know Unlike Hu Tao, he is not he's not a, a main DPS. He's not gonna do tons of damage He's literally there to make your team do more damage more damage more crowd control you know just tons of damage actually it's actually insane and the good thing about this right is basically once you do his elemental burst like i said there's multiple things that are good about his elemental burst once you do his elemental burst 
you will regenerate 15 energy for Venti automatically once you do once it ends. Once his elemental burst ends, 15 energy automatically for Venti. Automatically. And then if the elemental absorption occurred, this also restores 15 energy to all the characters of that corresponding element in the party. So if you set them on fire with pyro in that in that wind's grand OD, after this ends, boom. Elemental absorption has occurred. You put pyro on the party. Everybody in your party that has a pyro character gets 15 energy back. What? Like that's crazy, right? That is insane. He's a support support DPS, energy battery, and just literally crowd control. He's an insane unit. I've been over this before. This unit is absolutely, absolutely a team player, 100%. So what I feel like definitely between both of them, I don't want to make this video too long. So between both of them, between Hu Tao and between Venti, you're probably saying who should you offer? Why should you offer them? There's two types of playstyles in this game, or there's two types of people in this game. There's people that have five stars. You don't have tons of DPS they can choose from. Like literally, you don't even have to main one. You can just choose from many of them. Similar to me, how I have every, almost every character in the game. Or you know, we have those players out there that don't have main DPSs. We have those players out there that don't have main DPSs and have tons of support like Sucrose, or have tons of support like you know Bennett or Traveler Animal. Everybody has Traveler Animal, of course. But what I'm saying is basically this, right? If you want Hu Tao, there's things to keep in mind. Hu Tao's insane unit. Low HP is how you play her. Does tons of damage. Most She's going to do tons of damage. We're going to see the gameplay footage and it's going to be insane. She's going to do tons of damage. Her element is Pyro, which sets up for a lot of reactions, sets up for really good elemental resonance, and sets up for Melt and Vaporize, which do, do tons of damage. And she's also going to do low HP skill damage. Has an attack increase, elemental skill, and then her elemental burst regenerates her. Guys, this unit is a main DPS that can heal herself. That can do tons of damage. That can do reactions. Now, we have Venti. Venti is a insane team player, as I said. Crowd control, energy battery, DPS support, literally destroying the field, even if you want to do plunge damage. This character right here is meant to support the whole team. Crowd control is really one of the main things in this game because of the fact how Abyss works, the, the, the floors. Many, some, I heard on floor 11, I haven't got there yet, I've just started doing them. But basically on floor 11, guys, you literally, <laughs> You have lots of enemies. So why is this so good? It's because he's gonna put all his enemies in one spot, set it up for you to do tons of damage, and then decrease their res by the damage that's infused in the elemental burst by 40%. Then you're gonna do tons of damage on your character. It's literally just it makes no sense. So really what this is about, this is a war between do you want a main DPS or do you want a character that could support your main DPS? That is the question. Now, I'm not gonna convince you who you should get, but in my opinion, look, I have the Traveler, I have I have Venti, I have Sucrose. I have, I don't have Gene, of course, but literally I have those characters, right? And what is so good is I have enough animal support. I already have Vinci, so I'm not really worried about it. But if I was a free-to-play player and I looked at this and I didn't have a DPS, I didn't have a 5-star yet, I'd go for Hu Tao if I had Pity. If I have Pity, if I 100% have a chance to get a 5-star unit that is guaranteed to be the featured, I'm going for Hu Tao for the mere fact that she is literally a all-in-one kit. And if you'd want a animal character support that bad, you can use Traveler, like I said. Or if you have Sucrose, it's even better because she increases elemental mastery of the team based on her own elemental mastery, which will be extremely good for Hu Tao because the more elemental mastery on the more elemental mastery you have on her, then the more her reactions are going to hit for more damage. The more Melt's going to hit, the more Vaporize is going to hit. So I feel like definitely Hu Tao would be who I go for as a free-to-play player. But also you have to keep in mind Venti is insane support. This is a character everybody missed at the beginning that everybody regrets missing at the beginning because of how insane he is. But for sure, this is a battle between your support for your DPS, your main DPS, or getting a main DPS. So like I said, that is between you, but in my opinion, as a free-to-play player, if I was a free-to-play player, I would have gotten Hu Tao 100%. I would have saved for Hu Tao 100% because of the flexibility. But also remember, Vinci is also flexible. They're both flexible units. It just makes a really hard decision whether you want support for the team, like to just do tons of damage, or whether you just want a unit that has tons of damage and then you use like another animal character that isn't as good as Venti but can still do get the job done with the four-piece VV set. So really, it's up to you. But like I said, free to play player, I would get Hu Tao overall for just the flexibility with teams, the more damage she's gonna do, the crit damage, the transformation, the low HP skill damage. It's just so good. I feel like it's just, it out. It, it, I'm not gonna say it outclasses Venti because they're in two different classes in the first place. The one support, heavy support, heavy DPS support, heavy energy battery, one's tons of damage, tons of low HP skill damage, tons of HP regeneration, and just tons of damage, really. So like I said, guys, what I would do, like I said, I would go 100% for Hu Tao. That is it, that's the end of the discussion. But if I were you, I would still say Fu Tao. 
Venti is a really good option, guys. But at the same time, you have to think about it. When are we going to get... Like, a rerun on Venti is so, so good, guys. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like this character right here is just way more worth it. Especially for the free-to-play players that don't have main DPSs yet. You need a main DPS. You can really work around an Animo user with a 4-piece VV set. You don't necessarily need crowd control. You don't necessarily need them to regenerate 15 of your energy. You don't necessarily need any of that, really. So, it is sad that you have to choose between these. It's a really hard decision because, like, 18 days apart, if Venti does come out in the 1.4 Monster Festival rerun. But, like I said, 100% Hu Tao is who I'd go for, and that is the end of the discussion. So that's really about it for this video. I'm sorry that this is a really tough decision for you guys, and I hope this video did help you come to a conclusion on who you should get and why you should get them, because they're both extremely good units, both very versatile, both very just strong, very strong coming units. One support, one main DPS, just insane, right? But I hope this did help you come to a conclusion, and if it did, make sure you smash the like button down below. Join the subscribers on the grind to 2,500 by hitting that subscribe button down below. We are less than 20 subscribers away from hitting that goal. Please hit that subscribe button down below. I would love you. Mwah. Thank you. And also, cut on notifications to get all my daily uploads. And yeah, that's really about it for this video. I appreciate everybody that came out to watch this and took your time out of your day to watch this. I hope this did help you. And yeah, let me know down in the comment section below who you're going for. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.